Hello team, Coach Tim here. Jordan Spieth back in the winner's circle. Who would have ever thought that based upon his, um, his last result at the Masters? And also, who would have really ever thought about that based upon what's going on with this golf swing? He's really got some, uh, a, a rather very unique rehearsal uh, that just makes you think that he might not be in the winner's circle anytime soon. But of course, you know, uh, Jordan's an elite athlete. He's a fantastic competitor and, uh, and really a wonderful golfer. And while that rehearsal swing is getting so much attention, what I want to specifically talk about today is the wonderful world-class bunker shot that he hit on the last hole during the playoff. Hit it to about a foot away, secured the win to a large degree. So uh, there was one thing really interesting that I thought uh, that you guys might like, like to discuss about that bunker shot. The length of his follow through. It was incredibly short. It had to be based upon the line. So why are we always talking about trying to accelerate through our, uh, uh, through our golf shot? You don't need to do that all the time. And if we take a closer look at his technique for that specific shot, maybe that's another way for us to start considering uh, how to manage our distances uh, for our short shots, really for all shots, okay? So let's dive in and take a closer look. Okay, team, so let's take a closer look at why Jordan cannot have a follow-through on this specific shot. It all stems first, of course, from the lay of the land. What is lie is basically having in front of him. So he's got uh, his golf ball right up against the edge of the bunker. So that's going to limit his ability to have a follow-through. Well, we were supposed to follow through for everything, right? Obviously not under the set of circumstances. And Jordan finds a different way to be able to create speed and power to hit the golf ball the proper distance, even though he can't have a follow through. And he does that basically by probably taking a longer backswing, right? So here he is at the top part of his backswing. That's probably a three quarter length backswing. But he'd probably only take the golf club back to probably somewhere right around here if he was able to follow through. So, having said that, let's watch him actually execute this shot. Okay, and you saw how the golf club stopped uh, because of uh, uh, the, uh, the challenges of trying to hit it through uh, the edge of the bunker. And he still, of course, hit a world-class golf shot here. And we can see that his golf, club, his golf ball finished really less than a foot away. So... That's what I want you to consider here, team, is that it doesn't necessarily always have to be, you don't always necessarily have to follow through. If you can't follow through, you're going to have to take a bigger, back, a bigger backswing to create more speed, or you're going to have to take an element that allows you to create more speed, more ball speed, okay? So just something to consider. If you can't follow through, it's not the end of the world. If you don't like following through, you can still manage how far you hit the golf ball by taking a longer backswing, by having the club face in more of a closed face position versus an open face position. Those are all different ways that can help you control how far you hit the golf ball. So experiment with that, have some fun with that, and best of luck.